Uh, anyway, I keep getting sidetracked, like telling you guys about my life and all sorts of things. We're trying to race here. I'm in position S, by the way. Pretty good position to be in, but I'd rather be in position... What's the next one after S? R? Oh, four. Oh! <laughs> oh, I get it. That was a five. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and I never get tired of the PS1 Sony logo. It just feels, it just reminds me of a certain era of gaming back when I was playing Metal Gear Solid 1 and tons of demo discs and all sorts of other games, including this one, Wipeout. Wipeout by Psygnosis? Is that how you say it? Uh, the creators of Lemmings, basically. They were like, hey, you know, we made a, a you know, classic puzzle game. Why not branch out into the futuristic club-going racing genre? Um, and this game specifically, you know, we've played Wipeout games on this channel before. Wipeout kind of needs no introduction. It's basically Mario Kart in the year 2052 for realsies. You know, Mario Kart is played sort of, uh, you know, very casually, everybody's smiling, having fun. This is like the fate of the human race. Effing depends on the outcome of this future race. And uh, it's specifically aimed at fashionable, club-going, music-buying audiences. Uh, that's a direct quote from a review. Um, and it, it's because, uh, you know, Wipeout is known for having lots of, like, club and trance music in it while you race. That's sort of its thing. It's sci-fi Mario Kart with club music. <laughs> I think even the, the Hackers movie that came out in 1995 featured a game inspired by this, sort of a fake game being played in a club, you know. Um, I, I went to a lot of clubs in my undergrad days, as you know, many young younger people do. Um, I never saw video games being played in a club. Most of the time, people were just uh, dancing and drinking. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Wipeout 25... Uh, just Wipeout. I was going to say 2052, but just Wipeout. Uh, before we dive into the game, though, just a quick channel announcement. We are like five games away from hitting our 700th game, wrapping up our seventh year of doing this. And that's right. I did do the math correctly. The 700 game is the end of year seven. Um, at the beginning of year 8 is 701. But for the 700th game, I will be playing Dwarf Fortress. And I have no idea how to play Dwarf Fortress, so it is going to be a live stream event. And I hope, I hope, hope, hope that you guys will come and join me. And as I am playing, tell me what the hell I'm doing. I watched a tutorial on Dwarf Fortress a long time ago, thinking I was going to play the game. And after watching the tutorial, I realized there's no way I can handle this. So I'm going to watch some tutorials in advance of streaming it. But uh, I will be streaming this thing live. Uh, this should already be on my channel if it's not already. But you should see a premiere, an upcoming live stream, Dwarf Fortress, hashtag help me because I'm going to need it. Anyway, enough talking about things to come. Let's uh, play the game here today. Actually, uh, I spent so long on the title screen that it seems to be spinning up into a uh, into a demo, and I I actually cannot <laughs> undo this loading. So here we go. All right, let's go in ourselves. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm very excited about Dwarf Fortress. I know it's the basis for Minecraft. Um, and other than that, like I don't know a ton about it. Um, but I know it's like, it's kind of like you can do anything you want in it. Um, like there's, there's so many options and you can, you know, mine and build and build cities and all sorts of stuff. Um, I think anyway, I mean, who knows? I'll watch the tutorials before I play, but anyway, yes, come, come at the end of the month. Uh, again, you'll see the premiere date already on my channel. Come help me. All right, let's do a single race here and wipe out. And what are these letters even? Is this AG? It looks like backward six and forward six systems. I have no idea. Okay, I'm, I, I guess I'm selecting my craft, so we'll go with this. The wipeout. Oh, I like it's like an angry monkey. We'll do angry monkey. I I do like the simplicity of the wipeout craft. They feel sort of like half spaceships, half like hovercraft. Like it has a very cool style. 
Um, and actually, I'm going to turn this up a little so uh, I can get some of the sweet tunage. Um, these are actually like house and trance songs by real artists, I believe. So hopefully this video doesn't get like copyright striked um, for uh, for using it. Although actually these days, you know, I feel like, I mean, so I've been doing this, this quest for like seven years. Seven years ago when I started, I feel like it was way easier to get a copyright strike. Um, nowadays, people like do reactions to like full movies and they'll, they'll like leave full clips of the movies and stuff off. The one time that I watched a video on my channel, I watched it uh, with two of my friends as a special event. We watched The Wizard, and I was very careful not to include actually any scenes from the movie. We had some still images as we were watching and talking. Um, you can find it on my channel if you are curious about this. Um, I did put it up for everyone who missed the live stream to see. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like if I were to do this today, what are the activate shields? Um, I feel like if I were to do this, if I were to watch a movie on my channel again today, I wouldn't actually need to uh, do any of that. I could just literally show the movie. I mean, I have to edit it down a bit, so I'm not showing the entire movie. But uh, yeah, it sort of seems like copyright has really loosened up on YouTube, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, I've always talked about how the copyright strike system was a little, um, not only unfair, but it was stifling creativity. And, like, I understand that, like, if you make a movie, you don't want it streamed for free on YouTube, but if somebody's, like, commenting about the movie as they watch it, that's a little different than just straight up, you know, streaming. Anyway, long story short, I, uh, I have sort of thought of maybe doing some, a few other movie watchings on this channel. I know, I know primarily we'll always stick with playing games, but, uh... You know, there are some movie-based video games, or sorry, some video game-based movies? Yes. You know, like Mario Brothers, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. You know, we already watched The Wizard together, but even that one might be due for a redo at some point because I didn't really show any clips. I don't know. If you guys would be interested in uh, seeing me branch out a little and maybe do some reaction videos to watching, uh, uh, watching movies, let me know. I guess the only trick is, like, I don't really show my face on my channel, and in all three action videos, the whole draw is seeing the people's face. But I'd have to contemplate that. You know, would I be ready to show my face? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Anyway, but if people are really interested in it, uh, let me know one way or the other. Um, but uh, how did I get on this... this Oh, I was talking about the copyrighted music, yeah. Like, the worst YouTube does is claim your ad revenues. And, like, if I were a big channel, I think I keep dropping mine. If I were a big channel, I would certainly care about that. You know, like, if I was putting out videos that got, like, a million views, and I was getting, like, 500,000 Gs for every video I put out, if an ad, you know, company came and just stole my money, I'd be pretty pissed, right? Like, that's, that's legit. I put all this work into it, and now they're going to take my money. But well, what, because there's, like, a song in the background? Like... I would be upset, and I, I definitely would be a lot more careful. As it is, you know, like, um, surprise, surprise, I don't make $500,000 a video. <laughs> I don't get 500,000 views on a video. If I, even if I was getting penny of view, uh... Actually, if I was getting a penny of view, even with my view count, it's not bad. But yeah, I'm a small channel. I'm a niche audience. I got a niche audience, I know that. Um, you know, I think, uh... I think I made like two dollars last month on ad revenues, so respectable. I mean, I'm in the <laughs> acceptable range. I mean, I've said for a long time I never started this channel to make money, um, and I have thought over the years about like maybe trying to put some real effort into trying to grow it a little more. But um, well, two things have prevented me. One, my life just keeps getting busier and busier, and at some point it's going to slow down a little, but. It, it actually has hit a point where it's been hard to keep up with making videos for the channel. So I'm kind of just focusing on actually still making content. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm doing really bad with, like, you know, communicating with patrons and coming up with specials and all sorts of stuff just because I'm, uh, I'm basically barely surviving as a YouTube channel at the moment. But don't fear. That doesn't mean, like, I'm about to, uh, you know, abandon the project or anything. It just means that uh, for... You know, the next year or so, I might be hunkering down and, like, just getting by. Um, but the other thing that's prevented me from, like, thinking about, like, really trying to, like, quote-unquote, grow the channel 
is that I feel like in order to do that, I might have to change some of the videos I put on my channel. I'm not really ready to do that at the moment. I, you know, we've been on this thousand and one quest for so long together, guys, that I want to see it through. And I feel like if I started to split my attention into other kinds of videos, first, the flavor of the channel would change. Like that's, that's the nature of the beast. Um, but the other thing uh, that would happen is um, that I'd just be, you know, distracted away from this quest and um, yeah, it's just sort of something that I don't, I don't really want to change the nature of my channel at the moment. So, you know, for better or worse, I'm sticking with my small but loyal fan base through this thousand and one quest. When we end the thousand and one quest, maybe I'll branch out a little bit more. I'll probably always do let's plays, but I might do a few more live streams and you know, we might go back to some games we've always wanted to play, like uh, Earthbound and stuff, and do like a five episode, you know, full playthrough and things like that. But for the Thousand One Quest, we sort of have to just stick to our guns and, you know, mix it up. A couple of different games every week. Anyway, we, we sucked at that race. We got bad luck. This is my racer, actually. I thought it was a monkey, but instead it's a guy in yellow and green. So I don't quite know where he fits in to the futuristic racing, but maybe that was my guy, DJ Awesome, um, you know, driving. I mean, I imagine that in the future, in the future of Wipeout, everyone who is a racer is also a DJ because they have slapping tunes here. And frankly, you don't get that just by accident. Um, all right, let's try a different race car and let's focus a little more on the race the second time through. We can be a Sophia De La Rente or Paul Jackson. We're going with the PJ. And here are all the different tr tracks. It's funny, again, I think I played Wipeout 1 on a PS1 demo disc. I don't even think I had the whole thing, or maybe I did. But that track we just played, I really do remember it. I, I was terrible at it, as you just saw. I wasn't really racing all that good, but... Um, but yeah, I totally remember that track. It'll be interesting to see if I remember these tracks. That's the true mark of whether I own the game or I had a demo disc. If I don't remember the other tracks and I totally had the demo disc, but if I remember them all, then I had the game. It's funny how I can't remember. Um, and actually, I, I should stop saying I because it was my uncle who had a PS1 and I would play when I visited his house. But we used to spend like summers and stuff uh, visiting him. So uh, he lived in Oshawa. And when I was in high school, uh, oh God, I hate this first person view. When I was in high school, uh, we, me and my brother would usually go visit my uncle for like uh, a month or sometimes two in the summer, you know, cause like my mom worked full time and stuff. So like, we're just gonna literally, like me and my brother didn't go to summer camp or anything. Um, so it's like, we're just gonna sit at home unsupervised for two months. Even in high school, <laughs> well actually, I, I think in, by high school we weren't really visiting my uncle for months at a time anymore but uh definitely like when we were younger like you know grade six seven eight that kind of stuff it's like we i have a lot of memories of spending summers with my uncle I, in oshawa <laughs> so if you know toronto at all you know canada um you know some people are like oh yes i would go to go to my uh, cousin's farm and you know get out of the city and stay in the farm for uh for the summer you know oshawa its formal name is the Dirty Schwa. It's basically like a very blue collar suburb that's far outside of uh, the Toronto city center, but it's considered the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. But long story short, it's not a place most people would summer by choice. You go there because you have relatives there. And uh, my uncle had a PS1, so we played a lot of PS1 together. Oh, God. Um, he also had an old... Uh, an old DOS computer with tons of, uh, you know, games just copied on, like, his friend's black floppy disks. That's where I played, like, Leisure Suit Larry 1 and, you know, Battletech, the Crescent Hawks, Inception he had there. And, like, uh, and what I would do, he had this big box of, like, floppy disks. And as a kid, I would just flip through and try this game, try this game, try this game, try this game. When I found games I liked, I would put them near the front of the box so I knew I liked them. Um, and then eventually... Um, closer to the end of the summer, I would just, uh, we'd go out and buy a pack of discs and he would copy every game that I found that I liked and I would take it home with me. And that's how I, that's how I got Battletech the Crescent Ox Inception. My first copy was a bootleg copy. Um, and it wasn't until, uh, later on in life that I actually found it at a store. 
uh, along with the Crescent Hawks Revenge and MechWarrior 1 that I was actually able to, to buy it. And I've talked about that on my Battletech videos. That was such a magical day. Uh, anyway, I keep getting sidetracked, like telling you guys about my life and all sorts of things. We're trying to race here. I'm in position S, by the way. Pretty good position to be in, but I'd rather be in position... What's the next one after S? R? Oh, four. Oh! <laughs> oh, I get it. That was a five. <laughs> I don't know why I thought they were keeping positions in, uh, in letters. It's an alphanumeric positioning system. Oh, we got position four again. We're very consistent. This guy looks so dark, though. He looks like he was... He made a deal with Mephisto or something. Um, all right. Position four seems to be where we are. One thing I've not been doing is using air brakes. So I'm going to try that. Uh, old PS1 loading screens. You can never tell if the console froze or it is actually loading. It's just the whole thing just freezes and the music stops. And you just hope and assume that uh, it's loading. Um, okay, I just wanted to see if there was any difficulty settings in here. But, uh, okay, here are the air brakes. Okay, that's good to know. All right, let's try again. And we're gonna go, we're gonna keep trying different, uh, kinds of things. The Chervoski. Or the, it's a winking girl, it's the Wendy's mobile. <laughs> we're going for that. Um, I did recognize this track a bit, by the way, so I think my uncle did have the full game. Um, another thing I did after playing Wipeout back in the day is I actually um, went and found songs uh, that were from this game, and I, like, burned those to CDs and stuff um, for, like, my bus rides to school and things. Um, so I, like, actually discovered music through this game. Not every song. I will say that generally I'm not sort of a trance house music kind of guy. It's not my favorite genre of music by any stretch. Um, but that said, it's like there are some, uh, you know, good, good tunes in this and, uh, good tunage. And so, uh, okay, let's try this air break. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. Helps me turn, but it doesn't help me not hit the wall. Jesus. Oh God. I'm just like ping ponging everywhere. Jeez. I kind of want to go back to the um, initial track and just try and do a better job of it. Oh my god, this is hard to watch, I'm sure. Jeez. One thing that is tricky about these hovercraft is because they're basically just hovering over the air, they really have no friction. So if you do sort of an air brake to turn in one direction or the other, you don't necessarily like grip on the road in the same way like a car would. Oh my god, we're not going to make it! Oh god! <laughs> I like how we're in a hovercraft jet thing and we're afraid of falling into a pit. Can you even fall in that pit? I don't 100% know, but I don't want to really find out. Whoa. Oh, God. Even when I played this at my uncle's, like, over and over again in the, the summer, when I used to visit him, I don't think I ever really got good at this. I My way of playing Wipeout is to always ping pong around the walls and stuff. Just sort of like how I, how I play. Which is, of course, poorly, is what I'm trying to describe. I'm just not using that word. Um, I think another thing with Wipeout, and I've talked about this in the other Wipeout games that I have played on this channel, is that um, Wipeout... Oh, you bastard. Um, Wipeout's items don't really feel nearly as impactful as in Mario Kart. So, like, in Mario Kart, when you use a mushroom to give yourself a speed boost, it's kind of noticeable. Or when you hit a banana peel, like, you really wipe out. Here, if you hit a mine, it is inconvenient, and you do sort of get slowed down a little. But it's just a little, you know? Like, it's just enough to be noticeable, and then that's it. Um, or, like, hitting people with a missile. Like, I mean, I guess that stopped them, but... It just... Everything just feels less impactful, item-wise, in Wipeout than something like... Uh, Mario Kart. Crap. Keep hitting these things at bad angles, I think. Oh god, like that. Boost! Yeah, there we go. We finally boosted correctly-ish. Damn it. 
I think something else that I've been doing is just every time I'm about to grab an item, I just throw away whatever item I've got so my inventory slot goes free and I can actually pick up the item. Oh, I think I just mined that guy. Um, we're going to get position five, aren't we? We didn't even get four. Oh my god, what, who is this? Yikes. Um, wow, we've, we're actually doing worse now. Okay, we don't want to pick the Wendy's mobile. Oh, that's Wendy, of course. Wendy's mascot, Wendy. Um, you recognized her, right, guys? <clears throat> yeah, I just sort of keep trying to grab whatever item I can. I should be more... L let's start to be more strategic about this. And we only have one more set of cars to... Cars, whatever the hell these things are. Ooh, I like this one, the sort of firehead dude. Okay. <laughs> The interesting thing is, will an ice level even make a difference? When you have no traction, because you're in a hovercraft, ice becomes... Every track is an ice track. They all feel slippy as hell. You're, you're literally driving on air. There is no road. Oh, uh, I guess we will see. We're in Greenland, by the way. I haven't been paying attention to the locales. I'm pretty sure Canada was one of those tracks. So that's kind of cool. Now we have to change our view. I don't know what kind of madman races first person, but it's never been me. Oh god. We have the shield activated. Oh god. Okay, maybe it is a little more slippery. Um, oh god. Okay, so this, yet again, we're gonna do poorly on this track. Here's my thinking. I think I need to practice a track a little before I can get good at it. And that very first track is probably the most iconic Wipeout track of all time. Everyone who's played the demo and the game has played that track a lot. These later tracks, I don't know, I feel like they're not nearly as iconic. And the first one probably is one of the easiest ones. So here's my thinking. After I fail at this track, which is clearly I'm on, definitely on the path to make that happen. Uh, we'll go back and we'll practice that first track a couple times. Oh my god, that was a pit. Oh, thank- somehow we landed that. Um, we will lay- we will practice that first track, play it a couple times, and we will get better than fourth place. Oh my god, I'm just so bad at this. <laughs> One wall after the other. I think the later wipeouts- whoa god, the airbrake did nothing. Later wipeouts feel like they got easier. I don't know, because we play again, we played other wipeouts on this channel. I'm pretty sure like I placed in some of those other wipeouts that we played. I didn't play this terrible. I know I'm getting old, but like this is this is there's no excuse for this. Oh god. Yeah, I and I'm also like kind of waiting to recognize some tunes. I feel like oh wait, can we C D track? Aladrome. Do I reckon? Oh, message! Hold on. Oh, yeah! I do recognize. Okay, now suddenly we're going to be motivated here to do better. This track. Man, I remember having this on burned CDs! <laughs> I think the fall that I returned home after spending the summer my uncle's playing Metal Gear Solid 1 and Wipeout. I had this song and I had like the Mantis hymn and Rex's Lair and a couple other songs from Metal Gear Solid. So if you know the Mantis hymn, Rex's Lair, you can look them up. They're like iconic uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 tracks. Oh man, this just energizes me. You know, I was feeling a little, uh, not like down or whatever, but I was feeling a little bit like, well, we suck at this game. But like hearing this song now is like actually really sort of making, it's bringing me back to the 90s. Making me think that I'm a hacker. Making me be like, we gotta do this, guys. We gotta pull it together. Dryin', oh, ugh, those stupid air brakes. I will master those. By master, I mean be a little less worse at them by the end of today. Oops. Uh, I just love the part where the song goes, Duh! and the sort of chorus part starts. 
Oh yeah, we hear the crowd cheering. I just had the volume too low, that's why this game wasn't energizing me. I feel like I'm in a rave. I love how the music echoes when you go through the tunnel. I don't think I remembered that. Oh, and it feels like it's echoing kind of right now because we're in the mountains. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know if I ever appreciated that. Now it sounds like really open. Wow. The audio. Wow, who is this? Looks like she's sad she lost, and also a bunch of wires are plugging into her skull, downloading her brain. Wow, the audio effects in this are really good. Forgot about this. I like how it says bad luck, as if it was just like, well, you could have won, you just got a little unlucky. No, I suck, dude. To just say you suck. All right. We're going in. <laughs> And we're gonna master this puppy. We're going in with the John Decca. No Daniel Chang for us. First arena. In Canada! This one is, okay, well. My favorite Wipeout song, In Canada. The most famous uh, track of the most famous Wipeout game. I mean, we gotta we got get first in this one. There's, there's absolutely no excuse. We'll do it like, let's give ourselves a limit of like two or three chances. But, uh, I just wonder, like, if, if I would recognize any of these others. I think Message, for sure, I know, but anyway. Alright, here we go, boys. Time to bring the A-game. I'm gonna actually concentrate now. No more stories about, uh, my life before Wipeout. Only all that matters now is Wipeout. Missed him. I'm gonna try and use the item strategically, too. Also, like, if it's between an item and a boost, maybe I should be going for the boost shoot. God. Like, the boosts do seem to matter. I just boosted into that guy. Ow. Yeah, this is just a practice run anyway to, like, remind me about the layout of the track. Just save this rocket. Fly right at that guy. Missed him. To save the shield for the right opportunity. Ah, uh, hell, I'll use it now. Oh, we almost did that e break turn. Oh, he's protected too. I love the echo effects that we get. This is great. Yes. Oh, God. Okay, I'm starting to just kind of remember. You kind of have to sort of like bounce and bob around. It's a very floaty racing game, obviously. Oh, down you go. Oh, that didn't do anything! Wait, and he's past me! That would have never happened to Mario Kart. The items are way more impactful. Okay, I'm getting... Oh, crap. I'm kind of overcompensating a bit. I was going to say, I'm starting to get the hang of the... Oh, come on, I, I mind you! I mind you, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Those echoey tunnels are so cool. I'm just, like, motivated to hear more of this song in the echoey tunnel. Oh, God, that was a turn. Okay, we're we're actually being able to to make some turns here. Let's progress. Ooh, we got both. Oh, why did I fire that? I don't know. Um, a boost. I'll take it. Oh God. Oh, he rammed into me. That's good. Good for me. Okay, we got a missile or something. Oh shoot. I fired it just to get rid of it. Double boost. Yes. All right, we're in position four. And there's a third place guy. Oh, we did an e-brake turn. Finally. Ah, oh, crap. And then we hit a wall. But baby steps. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I was all over the place there. Oh, crap. Come on. The third place guy. We've never gotten third place. Oh, wait! No, that's a different turn! I thought we had to turn right! Oh, come on, he's right there. This is giving me, like, for some reason, flashbacks of, like, Gone in 60 Seconds, that, like, Nick Cage movie with Moby songs that came out around this time. I guess because we're playing, like, a racing game with, like, 90s-era club music and stuff. Shit! Ah, oh, we messed that up so bad. I keep saying we. It's kind of all on me. Sorry, guys. I'm letting down the team. Shit! Ah, we're so far back! 
Ah, oh, we got missiled. Everyone's cheering me for some reason. Ah, oh, God. Bastard. You know, when I did play this, I do remember... It took a lot of practice, but I think I was able to, uh... I was able to actually get, like, first or second place in this race. I don't know how I did it. I mean, I guess just practice. Although, we're not... We're kind of almost getting to third. Something. Hey, where's this bastard? There he is! Oh, we actually missiled him, and then we drove into him. Oh, come on! No, come on! Unfair! Okay, we double boosted. Yes! Third! This has never happened before. Okay, where's second place? Where's first place? I want to get them all. Well, the boosts really do make a difference. But I guess, don't get a boost at the expense of uh, hitting a wall. Ooh, now we're flying. Who's firing a rocket at me? <gasps> Oh my god! Second place, boys! <laughs> yeah! Oh god. No! Ah, shit. <laughs> oh, we're so close. No, 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 don't you rock at me! Uh, I have a missile. I will missile you if you pass me. Oh, you, yeah, you want to try it. Oh! Oh my god! Second place! <laughs> Jeez. Oh Ooh, I feel like I really had to work for that. Well, now I kind of feel like, you know, I did say we were going to practice this over and over, but like, we just got second. I say let's try one more different track. That was me in tryhard mode, and I was actually able to pull it together. I feel accomplished for that. Okay, we're going to try a different track, just so you're not watching the same track all the time. But that message song makes a world of difference. It's like just having the right tunage um, can really drive you. Um, okay, we're gonna pick that. Like this is the the car or whatever that you had in the demo, which is a, I, I'm pretty sure we had the demo first and we had the real game. I think that's the way it worked. Um, but since this is the one that I think I know the most, I'm gonna stick with it. And we're gonna go Venom Class Track 2 here, which is Japan. So we got second place in Canada. How can we do here in Japan? I don't know. We will see. I don't want to promise you guys anything because I don't want to get your hopes up. But, you know, we saw what can happen. I was messing up too in Canada for like the first half of, uh, you know, the race. And yet we still managed to pull second out. I think with the right level of effort. Oh God. Okay. Oh God. Oh God. Oh god. Okay. Rocket. Oh, that actually hit him. <laughs> it's so fun to hit with the, uh... Whoops. With the unguided rockets, because it feels like firing a green, uh, shell in Mario Kart. Yeah. I know I- Oh, you bastard! I was gonna say, I knew I could shoot that guy at any point, but I was waiting for the opportune moment. And then he goes and uses a shield. Like a jerk. Whoa! I'm bouncing all over the place. Oh, I actually hit him in the air! <laughs> Eat that dog! <laughs> oh, that was great! Yeah, you can't fire a rocket in a curvy area like. Oh my god, yes, you can. I'm gonna say in a curvy zone like this, there's no way it'll hit. Alright, we're in. Oh crap. Oh shoot. Well, there's two of them right there. Ooh. Yes, please! Sometimes I hit a uh, power-up, and I uh, think it's a power-up, and it's actually a booster, and that throws me off a little sometimes. Ooh, but now... Oh, shit! I overcompensated there. Oh, wait, where did that guy go? He just disappeared. Okay, I don't know what was going on with the fourth place guy. He phased out of reality. I thought it was in front of me. Okay. Oh, you bastard. Oh no! So hitting the other cars isn't great for your speed, but hitting the walls oof, seems to be particularly bad. Ah, oh, you bastard. Yes! Fourth place! Okay, we got one more lap. There's a third place guy, too. It can be done. It can be done. Missed him. 
Oh! Did that actually hit him? It did. Rocket mine missile. Jesus Christ! Oh my god, no. Mmm. Yes! I'm battling! There's a second place guy! We can do this! Oh my god, I'm actually not hitting the walls! It's unbelievable! Where'd he go? Where's that second place guy? Where did he go? He just like peaced out. My toes are curled, by the way. My palms are getting a little sweaty. That's how you know you're really getting into a game. Palms sweaty, toes curled. Oh, what the hell is this? Oh, no. Oh, it died. No! Oh, come on! Third! <laughs> we got it! Literally photo finish. All right, it's not second. It's not second, but uh, it's pretty good. Wow, two nail-biter of, a uh, two nail-biting races is pretty good. I mean, again, I mean, I thought I raced better on this one than I did the previous race, but I only got third here, whereas previously I was able to squeak in and get second, but, yeah, wow. Look at the progress you can make with just a little bit of effort and practice. We've been playing this for, what, half an hour, and already I'm starting to place? I think with a little more practice, I could sneak in a first-place win. But, uh, I think for today, for us... This is as far as we're going to go. Wipeout here is one of the classic, one of the most classic PS1 games. It launched a franchise. It, I sort of have mixed feelings about it. Like, I do like Wipeout. As you could tell, I was really getting into the last two races, really enjoying myself. It does have, like, a fun, floaty feel to it. Um, I still do feel like the weapons and the items are not as impactful as I want them to be. And there's a certain... Um, it's sort of hard to place my finger on it, but there's like a certain difficulty to it that I don't find in other racing games. Like, um, I've always thought of Wipeout as very similar to another game I really like called Whiplash, which is basically NASCAR style cars, um, but going through like loops and jumps and like crazy Hot Wheels kind of things, and you can destroy other cars and stuff. There's no items. But in Wipeout, for some reason, I find it much easier. So the, the fact that these cars are floating and hovering, and when they hit a wall, there's a huge penalty to speed. Um, I think those things combined make this feel like a slightly different racing game. So the things feel very floaty. But as you saw in the last two races, if you can master the air brake and start to get a feel for this sort of floaty, you know, you're driving a missile kind of mechanic... Um, you can do quite well, and it is actually kind of fun. It's a little different than a normal racing game. It's so hard for me to put my finger on. Um, but it also has some great club and trance music, if that's your thing. So, yeah, I don't know. If you've never played any Wipeouts, it's sort of one of those iconic games that is still fun. It's still fun to play. Um, so just go into it expecting a little bit of a learning curve. And even on the PS1, even with some graphical glitches and stuff, I think it still looked pretty good, still played good, great music. It was still fun, so yeah, I would check it out. Anyway, those are my thoughts. What do you guys think of the original Wipeout? Uh, does it rule? Is it a game that you love? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed yourselves today. If you did, if you were rooting for me to win those races, slap that like button, subscribe to the channel, donate $100,000 to my Patreon. It will be much appreciated. And other than that, I will catch you in the next video. Until next time, my friends, peace! One thing I really like is that when you change the CD track from random to message, it only plays message. Every race, every menu, every demo, you got your message, baby. I mean, it really is the best song, but still, it's pretty funny. Oh, God. <laughs>